Hello, yes, everyone. Yes. Welcome back to Glorious Events YouTube channel where we talk about all things events related. And today we are going to tackle the social events, specifically weddings. And because of the current ongoing corona pandemic, most of the couples have opted to go for civil marriages or civil weddings. And I just wanted to bring in a, an expert, a legal expert to talk to us, to let couples out there know what is required of a civil marriage in case that's the option they are looking for. This is not tradition of us as Africans, but we are adapting to Corona and just doing what is best for us. So help me welcome Council Barbara. I want to give a shout out to Council Eva Nadawa for connecting us. Thank you so much, Council Eva. And I want to thank you so much, Council Barbara, for accepting for me to host you on my channel. Please introduce yourself to my viewers. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, nice Barbara, a lawyer by profession. Uh, I specialize in family law, human rights, uh, corporate and commercial, land law, uh, criminal and civil litigation, then oil and gas. Yeah. Oh, that is That's really my a field of work. That is wonderful. And that is why you people are called learned friends. You call each other my learned friend. <laughs> now I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carl. So I really wanted you on this channel to just shed more light for couples out there looking to do civil marriages. Please tell us in normal lay terms, uh, language, yeah, <laughs> so that we can understand what is a civil marriage. Yes, thank you so much. A civil marriage uh, is that type of marriage which is contracted uh, at the office of the registrar of marriages. Uh, for couples contract that marriage, there has to be one woman and one man who are going to join hands for the bitterness of their family. So it has to be couples, um, one man, one woman. So it's a monogamous type of marriage and it's accepted in Uganda. And this, this, so, so yes. what, uh, where can we find the registrar of marriages here in Uganda? Where are they located? So at every district in Uganda, there is a registrar of marriage, but the headquarters are in Kampara, that is uh, at Georgia House, so the former Amam House, yes. That's where you can find that. It, those, everyone who is in Kampala can contract us for marriage at the Registrar of Marriage, that's the, at uh, the building called Georgia House, yes. Well, wonderful. But and for, for this other guys in up country district, there is a marriage registrar at every district. Okay. And for these couples looking to do this kind of marriage, what are the requirements that they need to have? Yes, the, the intending couple has to appear before the registrar of marriages or the registrar of marriage. Uh, in person for an oral interview. Okay. Uh, they have to carry the following. One, proof of citizenship. Uh, they have to show that they are either Ugandans or non-Ugandans. And that's done by them producing their passport or a national ID card. Even if they are not Ugandan citizens, can I they can be married here in Uganda. Exactly. Okay. Yes, yes. You also have to produce an LC one later mm -hmm. uh, for proof that you've been in that residence for not less than 15 days. Okay. So in that residence and in the district. Mm. If I told you, let me say you're staying in Nakasero, Kampala, you must mm -hmm. have been in Nakasero for 15 days 
and in Kampala district. Not saying that you've been in Nakasero for three days, then in Hoima three, but you're in Uganda, no? You have to be in that same district for 15 days. Yes, what of the amount that the couple needs to pay for a civil wedding, how much does it cost? Yes, they, they have to pay, if at all, one of the couple or the attending parties is a uh, Ugandan, they have to pay 260,000 Ugandan shillings. Okay. However, if at all, none of the parties are, is a Ugandan, they have to pay 210 US dollars. Yes, that's the amount of money they have to pay. And for them to prove that they have paid that money, it must produce receipts of payment. Yeah. Yes. So the receipt is also one of the documents which one has to go with before the registrar of marriage. There's also a passport size photograph for okay. both of the attending parties. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Then they must have two, yes, two witnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, whose uh, photocopies of national IDs must be also presented before the register of marriages. Then when it comes to the affidavit, uh, an affidavit is a document which shows, uh, which truly talks about the applicant. Or oh, the applicant mm -hmm. now is someone who wants to, to go through the civil marriage. Yes. yes. So you, in the application, you must state that uh, you, let me say, if you, you are told you are Ugandan, you have to, to say, I'm a Ugandan, I've stayed in this place. Remember, we've said that dates have to be 15 days. Yes. yes. So I've stayed in this area for 15 days and more. If, if, if I told you you've been there more than that, uh, yes. I'm, I've never contracted any kind of marriage. Uh, I'm not related, or you're not in any kindred with the other party. Because yeah. in Uganda, we, 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 yes, we, we don't allow blood relationship. So you can, me, I can't come with my brother and we go before the registrar of marriage that we want to contract a civil marriage. Every, a man and woman has to make an affidavit because yeah. it's an independent document for everyone is. What of these tribes who, who marry within their like cousins or the father is related to someone or maybe like the Indians, they marry within the family. So that is not allowed. No, for civil marriage, it doesn't apply, yes. Huh? Civil okay. marriage, you don't, need, you don't have to be related at all yes yes but if i told you you're an indian and you want to get married in uganda there is also hindu marriage which, which can allow you yeah practice your your kind of marriage okay and uh, these witnesses who are who are standing in as yes. and must they be married themselves the witnesses no, 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 no. <laughs> it's not a requirement that they, they must be married. Actually, you choose one of your choice. As long as they are of age, they are above 18. Okay, okay. I thought I had committed yeah. a crime because I have ever stood in for a friend who was getting <laughs> civil, <laughs> who was getting civil marriage. I didn't have so much information about it. But she just told me to come in and sign on her side to be like her matron. So it's good to know I didn't commit a crime. Yeah. <laughs> People must relax. <laughs> okay. Well, simple marriages are law abiding. They are legally recognized in Uganda. Is that so? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And they so, are governed by the Marriage Act. Mm. Yeah. The Marriage Act, CAP uh, 251. Yes. Okay. So basically, for, for you to follow that procedure, you have to look at Section 10 of the Marriage Act. It gives you the, what you have to put in your affidavit. Basically, mm. that is it. Because the affidavit, you have to state that uh, in this area, blah, 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 then you have to attach that else one later. You get okay. it. 
I'm a, I'm a Ugandan, blah, blah. Then you attach your national ID. So everything goes with the affidavit. Okay. And uh, yes. this, this is done all days of the week, all their specific days for civil marriages, uh, or it's open any day someone can go and do it. It's not open any day. You can't do it on a Sunday, a public holiday, or because it's open on from Monday to Friday. Yes. Okay. But okay. it has to start from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So if one contracts a civil marriage at 8 a.m., <laughs> it means you've, you've not contracted out. You, you, you people are not married because the law says it has to be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If it's contracted at 5 or 6 p.m., still there is no marriage. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. What, uh, yeah. what, would advise, what would you advise couples out there? Is this um, a good option given that we are in Corona and people are looking for where to cut costs? Is civil marriage a good option compared to maybe church marriages? <laughs> Yes, uh, actually, it all depends on what someone wants. But if someone wants a civil marriage, it's really a good option. You don't have to spend much or a lot of money. You only need you, yourself, the, yourself, the couple, and the witnesses. They go before the registrar. You can, you can really say we don't need even visitors. You don't need, you need an after party. Yes. <laughs> You can do your celebration there. Then after you, everyone goes his or her way, then you remain together like two people. So it really doesn't require much money. Mm. Yes. I really, I have really And it right. can fit in everyone's budget, really. I, I really agree with you because my time when I was standing in for my friend, after signing the papers, we just went for a luncheon. And that was it. We were like 10 people maximum. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> it's, uh, exactly. it's, it's just that in our African culture, people like big celebrations. But I think Corona is teaching us to scale down to what's manageable. Yes. What about the parents of the couple? Does the registrar need approval or letters from the parents showing the approval of this marriage? Now, remember we talked about section 10 of the Marriage mm -hmm. Act. Mm -hmm. It says one of the couple has, has to be uh, above the age of 21, from 21 and above, yes? Mm -hmm. So it says that if someone is below the age of 21, mm -hmm. and then a consent has to be got from the parents. Okay. But if I know these guys are all above 21 years, above 21 years, then there is no need of consent. Yeah, two people, a man, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could this be the reason why there's a lot of elopement yeah. in Western culture? Because people can just decide to go to a registry and sign papers, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But but you can't sign them in one day. Of course, there is a notice you have to fill. Whoa. Yes, uh, after you file the affidavit and the other documents we talked about. Okay. So after you filing those documents, you have to fill the notice at the registrar of marriage. There is a notice book. The, uh, you indicate your name, your marital status, and everything. Okay. So after that, that notice is put on the registrar of marriages, yes, notes board. So it, it has to be there inviting for everyone to see that so and so or Barbara is getting married to so and so. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it, it, it's not a one day thing. Fine, you file your documents, but. Mm. There has to be a 21 days notice, yes. Wow. Yes, after a 21 days notice, and no one has um, has come up 
with a claim that your summon is so and so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then, then, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> then the registrar has to go ahead with the with the marriage, solemnizing the marriage. Okay. Yes. Okay. But uh, if at all there is uh, someone he, who claims that you're you, you're married to someone or someone so and so you were married under customary or somewhere. Then yes. that person has to put a caveat. Mm. And that means that your marriage won't go ahead, not until the court has decided the matter. Yeah. Mm. So after the caveat being put, mm. yeah, after the caveat being put, then the registrar ceases to have power over your application. Then the registrar has to forward your matter to court, to the high court. Yeah. Wow. Then it's court to decide uh, and mm. assess that matter. Then after deciding whether you people or whether the couple is fit to go ahead with their marriage, it refers back the file to the registrar of marriage, to organize the marriage. Ah. Okay, and all this has to be done before the 21 days are over. What if someone just it, finds it out? Actually. What if they find out after you have already signed? They can't annul it. It's yeah, then, then there you go through the, you go through the, no, it's not final, but mm -hmm. you have to, to go through the, now the formal ways of challenging marriage. Ah, you must always choose violence. Violence is the way. Then someone yes. applies for analogy. Uh huh. Yes. And those who have complaints, they contact to cancel Barbara <laughs> to search them out with family court. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Those at least the couples out there know the basic requirements needed for a civil marriage and what will go on. How long does that process take, the process of legalizing this marriage? Does it take a long time? Is it one hour, 30 the minutes? Process of, uh, well, it doesn't take a lot of time. Actually, actually the, the, it's, the registrar sits down. It can even take like 30 minutes. It depends. Okay. It's only mm. those small small words which you have to say then someone says i do the no more i do words yes and then the, the ceremony is done it doesn't take the whole day oh it is that that <laughs> yeah. so after i'm exchanging the rings and everything it, it's true yeah okay mm -hmm. okay that, so it doesn't take the, the whole day it's really something which is unique Mm. Yes, uh, you can actually the couple can decide to do their wedding, that uh, civil marriage, in one hour or two. You go wow. to the registrar, you solemnize the marriage, you go for your or something, then the day is done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. I hope couples out there are hearing this and seeing this is really a viable option for you people, especially if you're tight on finances or you can't afford a big wedding, please work within your means and you can still make your union legal by using civil marriages like Council Barbara has explained for us here. Uh, Council, any parting shots, any parting words for our couples out there? Some words of wisdom. Uh, I want to encourage our couples that are, yes, that are contracting civil marriage in Uganda is legal. And uh, every Ugandan and non Ugandan can as well go for civil marriage. So let them not fear, as long as they have the prerequisites, then they can go ahead and go draft civil marriage. It's time, money, and resources, yes. Yes. And uh, in your 
in your experience or in your field, how many civil marriages have you witnessed? I've uh, witnessed like 15, drafted, drafted the affidavits, lots of them. Wow. However, <laughs> there is a time I found a uh, okay, challenge uh -huh. uh, where this, um, okay, it, I can't disclose the name, but I can say the white man mm. uh, came and deceived a, a black Ugandan lady that uh, he's not uh, married and so on. Then, mm. But now God, for they, they could finalize with the process, we got to know that the, the man is really married. Yes. Wow. Uh, he brought up uh, a document from his country, which, is, which wasn't sealed. So when we mm. go to contact the side of his country, we found out that the guy is married. That's how... And when the, the girl survived the illegal and fake marriage, yes. Oh, <laughs> Good. oh so this yeah. is also a word of caution to single ladies out there, to, you know? Exactly. So they yes. do a background search before they jump in. True. <laughs> Actually, without that, they can really land into something which is really good. Yeah. And, and it's, it's fake. You think you're married, but you're not married. Someone has just played around with exactly. you. Wow. Oh. So, yes. Can you tell us how someone can reach yes. you? Are you can... located? How do they reach you for support? Yes, uh, we are located at uh, Greenland Tower, second floor. The law firm is called Musinguzi and Company Advocates. Yeah, or someone can also reach me out on my telephone uh, at Airtel. It's 0751757817. It's full of seven. <laughs> <laughs> we shall lucky numbers, yeah. Yeah, zero seven seven three forty eighty thirty seven. Okay, I'm going to put all the contacts yes. of Franco Barbara in the description box so that whoever needs her services, maybe doing an affidavit mm -hmm. or going through with a civil marriage, you know exactly who to work with. Thank you so much, Kansto. I really appreciate your time being here with us and talking to the couples and giving them factual information. I believe they now know exactly what to do. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, too. And uh, a big thank to yeah. Kansto Eva Nagawa, your colleague, who is a fellow YouTuber, though she doesn't do family show. Yes. But guys, you can go and check out Kanso Eva Nagawa's YouTube channel. She also does law, but in another form. I think it's company or business law. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes. So for all the true that go over there and see how it works. But for those who want advice in family matters. This is the right place with Council Barbara Niza. She will handle all your cases very well. Thank you so much, Council. Thank you too for hosting me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, people. Continue being safe, continue wearing your mask, keep safe. For those who are planning weddings, you know what to do. Reach out to glorious events for the best, best memorable events of your life. Thank you so much and God bless. Bye.